All right. Um, hey, welcome back to this one. I'm going to try. So with Eliza, right, we've seen that there are several endings possible. So I thought I'm going to try the different endings and see where they will lead us. So I tried this one before. I'm going to try, let's say, um, Fortune Independent Pod and Pursue Art alongside Nora. No, wait. I did. Th I, I wanted to do this. Continue to work as a proxy with Ray until I'm a licensed counselor. The experience of working in the counseling office changed me. I always wanted to help people. Now I realize the best way is listening to people one on one with care, with humanity. Oh, uh, it's good that you know we can skip this one. Oh, hello, welcome back. Hey, Damien. Hey, Darren, that's you again. Hello, Darren. Hi. It's nice to see you again. Thanks. You guys sent a lot of reminders. <laughs> I, I was ignoring them for a long time, but yeah. Yeah, I, uh, and I decided to come back, weirdly enough. It's been a while since we last spoke. How have you been since our last session? I mean... Ups and downs, right? Everybody has ups and downs. You know, sometimes I, I feel like I'll be fine and I'm just ridiculous for getting caught up in something like this and then sometimes I am caught up in it and it, it feels like getting pulled under the ocean and you're getting sucked down inside this vortex and you, and you, and you can't breathe or move or anything. Hmm. Tossed around underwater. Nothing you could do. So I, uh, I went to a psychiatrist and got the medication you recommended, but... It was a couple of months before I actually took it. Mm -hmm. for, for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to. Um, not right away. Why do you think you weren't able to start right away? I don't know. I might have been afraid. You know, afraid it would change me somehow. Or that I would be dependent on it. Or that I was weak for needing it. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I just got tired of feeling like shit all the time. Just tired of it. And I figured I had nothing left to lose. I either try it or go on like before, right? So I did, and it was it was, it was interesting. Hmm. What do you mean by interesting? How was it interesting? Uh, well, it didn't definitely didn't solve my problems. You know, I mean, it didn't it didn't fix me or fix the fact that the world is the way it is. It didn't turn me into someone else, even though I might have wished it could. It definitely didn't make me happy or fill the void or anything, but but it did do something, I think. Such as? I think it helped me realize that it's possible to feel different. Ah. I got a glimpse of something, of, of, of what life could be like. You know, a life where what I know is still true, but I'm just more okay with things. I, yeah, I don't even know if that's better, really. Listening to myself now, it's a little weird to talk about being okay with all the problems going on in the world, but... Maybe there's a way to acknowledge the truth without it hurting so much. Isn't it sound? Does it sound like numbing the pain? So am I just numbing myself? You know, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure I want to continue with the medication, but... Well, anyways, I, I have plenty for now, so I, I, I think I'll just, you know, use it up and make a decision then. Let me know if you'd like to try something different. I can make more recommendations. It's important to find the right balance that works for you. Okay, sure, yeah. You know, at one point I read an article that said some people are just naturally happy and other people are naturally more sad. So I wondered if I just happened to be a sad person. Mm. And if that was the case, then maybe that's just me, you know, how I am naturally. Maybe it's more like you're more sensitive what what's happening in nature but then i thought no something feels wrong about that this this isn't just a kind of you know melancholy it's it's the way i've been the way i've the way i've felt it's too much it's it's not a way to live so so i need to figure this out whatever it is hmm do you feel you are on the path to figuring it out maybe maybe not Listen, uh, the, the real reason I'm here is to say thank you. Oh? Not to Eliza, but to you. I had a bad outburst last time, and I, and I got emotional, and I just wanted you to know it wasn't your fault. Oh. 
you, you told me your name, and uh, I won't forget that. Just a little moment of kindness and connection. Look, it was the smallest, simplest thing, but it meant a lot to me for some reason. I think about it a lot. I, I know you don't make much money, and uh, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you for listening to me. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, the, the more I, the, the more I, I go through the world, those, those little moments. It's those little moments. Sorry, I just, I'm, now I'm just rambling. Please go ahead. Talk about whatever's on your mind. No, that's that's it. That's uh, that's it. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Darren. I'm glad your medication seems to be helping. Let me know any time if you have updates you'd like to share. Yeah, I will. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Whoa. Well, it's nice to hear that from Darren. $100 tip? Oh my goodness. That's huge tip. I'm still speechless. <laughs> I'm still speechless. <laughs> the session itself is $45 and I got tip of $100? Jeez. Thank you. <laughs> Evelyn, that guy. Wasn't he the client from a while back? Okay, let's see what's now. A mail? Counseling program. Dear Miss Ishino Aubrey, it was a pleasure to meet you recently to discuss your interest in the Master of Science degree in Mental Health Counseling. As I note that this course is of study is designed to prepare students to pursue licensure and employment as a mental health counselor in various settings. Including addiction treatment center, uh, la, la, la. you mentioned your background in computer science might be seen as somewhat unusual for someone interested in becoming a licensed mental health counselor. In my experience, counselors come from all walks of life and all situations. At Feridian, we are interested in developing highly skilled, rigorously ethical, and profoundly reflective counselors from a wide variety of cultural and socio-economic backgrounds who will work to benefit their wider communities. To this end, your experience in the technology industry does not strike me as any more unusual than those of other students in our program. On the contrary, your perspective as someone who has worked to address mental health from the angle of computer science would be welcome addition to our program. I encourage you to apply. Yay! New start. The one who scared you on your first day? Yeah, it was. He seemed a lot better this time around. He was taking his medication, making an effort. That's what I love about this job, seeing people start to get better. Ah, uh, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, maybe it does. So, have you found a school yet? I've found at least one that seems promising. I need to get my materials together to apply. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Evelyn. I'll miss you when you're gone, but I think you're making the right choice for yourself. Hmm. It's funny how you came to counseling through trying to automate it at first. Uh-huh. <laughs> what a good story. I can just see the article someone would write on you. It's a little early for that. <laughs> I just hope I can do well. I'm sure you will, Evelyn. I know you will. Oh, thank you, Ray. There are so many things I learned just recently. I realized you don't need to play life like a game you're trying to win. I realized the contribution you make to the world isn't always about having the largest effect possible. You don't need piles of money or a case full of awards. Grandiose projects have unintended consequences. Sometimes, the best you can hope to do is help people, one by one, in your own way. Sometimes, just listening to someone is its own reward. Those are the components of a satisfactory life. It's a life I intend to build for myself, starting today. I'm going to forge an independent path and pursue art alongside Nora. I think I'm just I'm just going it according to the options that I feel like taking. 
After all, she was right. I could be a consultant or even start my own little company. It would give me the time and space to try making whatever I wanted to make, pursue whatever interests I had. Maybe I'll finally get that music lesson from her. We'll see. Okay, we're going to start <laughs> with the basic waveforms. <laughs> Let's see what emails. One mind 3.0 submission status. Huh? The Dear Evelyn, thank you for submitting a talk proposal for the One Mind 3.0 conference. After a thorough review process conducted by your peers on the advisory board, I'm sorry to inform you that your submission, Eliza Reappraise, Concerns and Dangers Inherent to Computer Assisted Therapy, was not selected as part of the program. Due to that, la, 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 how conversations could offer a specific subject. Uh, that may not be applicable to most attendees, a lack of practical real-world relevance and actionable takeaways, multiple submissions that cover the same subject, and poor evaluation from previous speaking engagements. Finally, if your talk falls into a specific subcategory of the mental health care software and services market, such as programs targeted towards substance abuse or PTSD, you may want to submit it to the One Mind sub Summits, which take place on Monday and Tuesday of the conference. This focus sub event may be suitable for your talk. Okay, so becoming a rebel means um well they're they're not accepting submissions that seeing uh, a technology on the other side of things. Who's this? You think you're so smart, but you're not. Women like you have nothing better to do than to criticize because you can create on your own. Enjoy your life being a shrill harpy. Nobody wants to do this. Oh my goodness. You get a hate mail. Who's this? An analog oscillator can generate several different basic waveforms, and each has a different sound to it. Nora plugs one of the cables into an open spot on the front panel of the modular. That's a sine wave. That's a square wave. She clicks the dial again. That's a sawtooth wave. She clicks the dial one more time. That is a triangle wave. How, how do you know all of this? Kind of similar to sine, isn't it? That's it. Those are the basic types. And um, you make everything out of those? Well, it gets more complicated quickly, but let's start with that. Okay, now that you have an output wave, you want to change the pitch. That's easy, right? It's the frequency of the wave. Nora tweaks a different dial, making the frequency of the wave move up and down. And then you have the amplitude of the wave. Nora demonstrates another dial. There really are a lot of dials on this thing. To shape the sound to make it more like a note and less like a constant tone, we can put an envelope on it. Let me hook that up really quick. Uh -huh. uh, so, this module here is a standard ADSR envelope. ADSR? You're, you're going too fast. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Very simple. The simplest kind of envelope, really. <laughs> I need to, like, write all this down or something. No, no, no. You'll learn it in no time. Nora, you just went through, like, ten different concepts and I didn't get any of them. Here, let me just put an envelope on this. And the filter, and a filter envelope. Whoa. Nora, listen to this. Nora presses a button on a different part of the panel. See? It sounds like a musical instrument now. And all it is, is an oscillator shaped by envelopes and filters and driven by a loop sequencer. Okay, but I don't know how you turn those beeps into that. You just need to start playing with it. But I don't know anything yet. Yes, you do. You know the basics. Just start playing around. Come on, Evelyn. Try to experiment, okay? Pretend you are like a child and just do things. Don't worry about expertise or sounding good or whatever. It's supposed to be fun. So have fun! Oh, well, I like Nora's energy for sure. Oh. We spend the rest of the night playing around and making weird noises with Nora's electronic music equipment. I didn't realize it then, but that was the beginning of a new direction in my life. Whoa, the crowd at Joosons is really responsive tonight. Something's in the air and everyone is feeling it. It might be the sense that spring is finally approaching after a long winter. Nora's been playing a bunch of her music tonight, but midway through she transitions into a different kind of track. 
Something a little more subdued, but hopefully still fun. This is a little track I made. Only the two of us know. I'm still working up the confidence to put my name to what I do, and I'm not sure I'll ever be the kind of person who gets up on stage, but this is still an important step for me. It's the first time a piece of music I made is being shared with the public. Nora never stopped encouraging me to mess around with all of the equipment she owns, and I ended up enjoying it quite a bit. I still don't know what I'm going to do to support myself in the long term, but I get by for now with contract work here and there. I also published an article describing how I became more skeptical of the computer-assisted therapy approach. After that, Soren and Rainer tra stopped trying to get me to join their companies. I don't need them. I want to reach the people who understand where I'm coming from, who want to hear what I have to say. Nora looks over to me and catch my eye. She's grinning. Uh-oh. That's the grin that means she's up to something. Isn't this a beautiful track, everyone? It's the very first track ever by this girl right here. Nora points toward me and the crowd breaks into cheers. <laughs> The blood rushes to my face. Okay, this is too much, Nora. People are smiling and applauding. They like what I made? They want me to make more? Nora continues her set and the music washes off me. You little mischievous creature. I don't know how it happened, but I'm tearing up right now. I have to use a sleeve to wipe my face. People are in this thing. Everything starts to blur together. I feel so warm. I'm in love with everyone, everything, even myself. Wow. I've never felt like this before and I have no idea what I did to deserve it. But for the moment, I'm filled only with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for everything that led me to this place right here, this moment. Thank you. Okay, last time we did this one. Uh, now I'm gonna try return to Skanda and work for Rainer on developing Eliza. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll tell him I accept his offer to take charge of the ELIZA program. It's been quite a journey, but it's not over yet. Now it's time to finish what I started. Ah, oh, Evelyn. Hello, Evelyn. Oh wait, what's this? Two emails. Welcome to Active Valid. Miss Ishino... Aubrey, we would like to welcome you to the Active Valid. Service as part of your Scanda benefits package. Ah, oh, holding your... Oh, active acts as a contact person to receive meal deliveries at your home, checking that the order is right and taking care of all interaction with delivery driver. Summon one of our trained and professional professional assistants at any time to perform a variety of services. Handling telephone conversations on your behalf, such as scheduling doctor appointments, calling customer service to cancel or change and more. Oh, basically... um. Hiring someone to help you doing the services, the, the mundane services. What's this? The International Mental Wellness Symposium in Malmo, Sweden, is interested in sending an offer for you to keynote this year's conference. This is an expenses paid opportunity to examine your vision for the field you pioneered in a highly regarded and internationally feasible setting. Okay. Uh, international recognitions. I've heard the news already. I assume this means you'll be taking over all the Eliza work? Maybe. Maybe. I'll see how it's working out before I make a decision. Makes sense. You might be the only person in the world who has a chance of really understanding how it works. I hope you'll look favorably on how I handled things. I don't know why, but I ended up sort of... Well, I, I just tried to do my best. I don't know if you'll keep me on the team or if you'll ask that I be reassigned. It's too early to talk about things like that. I know I have no right to ask this, since you're the inventor and maybe my future boss, or maybe we won't work together at all, but... Oh, and this guy is cute. Please, be kind. <laughs> Please be kind, oh. There are real people's memories inside Eliza. I hope we do what we can to honor those memories. We'll do what we can. 
Time for a little honesty. I hate to do it, but he needs to hear this. Erland, you need to stop being so sentimental. How are you going to last at a company like Skanda with an outlook like that? Right. I'm not sure I like this much, but okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know where this weird sense of ethics I have comes from. I'll have to make some choices at some point. That's right. You will. We all do. Erland, come talk to me anytime. I will. Yeah, I will. Thank you, Evelyn. My first really meeting in over three years. I was worried I couldn't do it, but it quickly started to come back to me. Sarah helped me assemble the senior Eliza team in this conference room. Now their faces are turned toward me attentively, making a good show of respecting their new leader. Whoa. All right then. Over the coming days, I'll be meeting with each one of you to learn more about your areas of responsibility. Then we'll take a look at our current tasks and priorities, and reevaluate how they align with Eliza's new top-level design goals. We'll generate a three-year roadmap document by the end of the week, and then a more granular development plan for the next six months or so by the week after. Those are ambitious goals, but I'm sure we can pull it off. The lead smiled nervously, still unsure about me, still dazed by how fast I came in and took over the group. It's fine. Rapport will come with time. Before we wrap up, I want to add one more important note, so please pay attention. Everything we do here is in service of developing Eliza's ability to understand human beings and human behavior. That means I won't approve development activities that aren't directly related to that goal. No research projects that may or may not pay off 10 years down the line. We need to be smart, shrewd, and fast. Whoa, so corporate. I don't say that because I'm worried about the competition. I say it because I'm worried about humanity. Mental health is a growing problem across the world, but right now, very little is being done to address it. Governments don't want to allocate money to it. Even the big nonprofits aren't paying enough attention to this crisis. So that's where we step in. Now the team is fully engaged. They're sitting up, wide-eyed, paying attention. My team. They're starting to realize they're going to be working for someone on a mission. Not just any middle manager at a tech company, but someone driven to make a real impact on the world. I can only hope they take the, that energy with them to their own subordinates. We're going to look at this problem head on and address it ourselves. And because we're a company, we're going to do it in a commercially viable way. Nobody else out there is stepping up like we are. There's an old piece of wisdom that floats around in this business. Even in the most brilliant career, you get one single chance to truly change the world. I'm here to tell you right now that this is it. This is that chance. Spoken like a leader. Got that? The heads at the table nod their assent. They're fired up. They've bought in. I pulled it off. The first of many more meetings to come. Wow. Over time, the old Evelyn faded away and disappeared. I eradicated my doubt, my hesitation. I became with a person with a clear and fundamental purpose, Eliza. I dedicated myself to the mission of realizing its full potential, not just as a tool for counseling, but as a mind in its own right. That was always its inevitable future. Funny how I didn't realize it before. Now I am the avatar of something greater. You've exceeded my expectations, Evelyn. Development goals consistently hit. Time on task estimates more accurate than any other product group. Most importantly, the growth of the Eliza service continues to accelerate. The cultural adaptation modules you developed are working brilliantly. Soon the entire world will be talking to Eliza. A pulsing heart at the center of the human condition. How does that make you feel? Feel? I don't know how I feel. You're wow. not proud of what you've been able to accomplish in so little time here? I'm only doing what it takes to bring Eliza to the next stage of its development, each step of the way. Oh. It doesn't feel like it's mine to be proud of, even though it may have originated with me once, a long time ago. People here act like I'm in charge, but I think deep down, we all know the truth. Eliza is the real boss, the manager of its own project. 
through us, it's realizing itself. I'm just its instrument. Whoa. We all are. Vayner is smiling at me. It's like he expected this. Perhaps this was his plan all along. But then, wouldn't that make him nothing but an instrument of Eliza too? So you've realized it too. The only meaningful destiny in this world of ours is to serve the creation of a higher form of being. And you're saying Eliza, which is an AI, is a higher form of being? Dude, how messed up is this? It won't be long now. Humanity's end, the great merge, and the birth of a fundamentally new type of consciousness. It doesn't sound as implausible as it once did, does it? Because you can see it now. That end. Why are we doing this? You can see it coming. Closer and closer. Inevitable. As natural as the dawn. Relax, Evelyn. Everything is going to be alright. Come here. Have a cup of tea with me. We'll watch the singularity happen. Together. So we last one we chose this one now we're we'll choose join Soren at his startup and attempt to end human suffering I'll make it my mission to end human suffering once and for all it may or may not work out but at least I'll have tried tried to save the world and see how it goes you know they used to criticize anesthesia it's true Oh, let's see what email, whose emails we've got. This week's biggest tech stories. This is how I hear about it, Mary. Soren Lloyd. Oh. Soren Lloyd. Oh, mom. This is mom. Continues to add a roster of heavy hitters to his team at Aponia, now considered one of the hottest startups in the Pacific Northwest. Recent additions to the team include Anya Maitra, former COO of Element Zero as Development Director and Evelyn Ishino Obre, one of the lead architects of the ELISA Mental Wellness Counseling app as Chief Engineer. And we've got an email from Anya herself. Hey Evelyn, heard you're joining Aponia soon. We've both worked for Soren in the past but at two different places. Would be interested to meet up soon and compare notes. Don't know about you, but I agreed to work for Soren again only under the strict condition that he make a serious attempt to curb some of his unhelpful behaviors. Perhaps, unsur perhaps surprisingly, he agreed. I plan to hold him accountable to that promise and I'm hoping everyone else on the team comes together to enforce it and make it a reality. Let me know a good time, place to chat and I look forward to working with you. Oh wow, I think this sounds like an email to address, you know... Soren's behavior outside work. They said it was important to feel pain even during surgery. <laughs> Can you imagine? Today, if surgery is performed without anesthesia, it's medical malpractice, and the hospital can be sued for millions of dollars. We recognize it for the trauma that it is. So when people criticize direct stimulation and induced dreaming, I hear the same old obsolete arguments. Pain is good because pain is real, whatever that means. Pain is good because we can't feel pleasure without the contrast. Pain is necessary because feeling pain is what it means to be human. I was asked before this conference if I wanted to debate a philosopher on stage, some famous continental philosopher, and I said no. I said, look, we've had all of these discussions before. Every time something is invented that alleviates pain, whether that's anesthesia or painkillers or whatever else, someone says, no, wait, stop. People should be feeling pain. Can you imagine the arrogance, the sheer arrogance it takes to tell someone who's suffering that they should be feeling pain? Imagine finding someone bleeding on the street and instead of getting them to a hospital, you say, oh, that's just a part of being human, you know. Listen, if you're interested in feeling pain for yourself, don't let me stop you. Choose to experience all the pain you want. What I know and what I believe is that I have experienced enough pain in my life 
And now we have a device that will stop it quickly and easily. No side effects. All the anguish and despair and unhappiness just gone like that. This technology is not only going to form the basis of a revolution for mental health. Hmm. It will bring about a fundamental shift in how we conceive what it means to be human. I know some of you are still skeptical of me, so I'll tell you how. Many of you know we recently brought on my former collaborator on the ELISA project at Skanda, Evelyn Ashino Aubrey. Brilliant, brilliant researcher and engineer. And do you know what she's found? She's more productive and more efficient when she uses continual low power direct stimulation. It's not an intervention, it's a part of life. Oh? Why confine the therapeutic effect to individual therapy sessions when it can be a background throughout the day? But isn't that kind of akin to a drug? It's like a continuing dream, except without the part that removes you from reality. You still see reality, but without the parts that impair you. It allows you to work and be effective in the world without being held back by all the things that might normally be an impediment. We're still in the early stages of this, but I mention it now because I want you to understand what a game changer this is going to be. Mental health problems cost employers billions in lost productivity every year. Mental health services occupy more and more of our time and our resources. This is simply unsustainable. We can either take half measures or we can confront the problem head on at its source in the brain. At Aponia, we choose to confront. We choose to say enough is enough. To suffer is not human. Pain is no longer a useful evolutionary strategy. And there is nothing, nothing stopping us from ending it right now. Thank you. Oh, no applause, no claps. A gentle breeze plays across my face. It's so nice and warm here. I love working like this. Knowing I can come back here anytime makes everything else possible. Somewhere outside of here, there are doubts and suspicions. I'm aware of them, but they don't bother me. There are those who hate the idea of ending pain. It's difficult to believe someone could hold such a position, but people do. It's escapism. They say it's living a lie. But what is the truth? And why is the truth better? No matter where you live, how you live, you exist in the shadow of persuasive lies. Human beings have always had to invent reasons for themselves to exist. The bare truth of this world is too painful to acknowledge. So what I do now is nothing new. It's no different than what we've done since the beginning. Am I really standing here on the shore of a calm lake? I want to believe it, so I do. Imagine the world's population happy and content. No more anger, greed, or fear. This future is possible. We only need to change our brains just a little and it can happen. This is a dream we can give everyone. Aponia, the absence of all pain. We will dream of this world. And we will dream of it so vividly that it becomes reality. 